Today in Ortho 2 we are going to be talking about Australopithecus. Australopithecus was a genus of ape that were among some of the earliest human ancestors. They mainly walked on two feet and exhibited complex behaviors like tool use and construction. Before we talk about how fascinating our ancestors were, let's talk about their evolution. Around 10 million years ago there were no chimps, gorillas, or humans. They had not diverged from their common ancestor at this point. But there were multiple species of ape like Nocolopithecus. Nocolopithecus was a gorilla-like ape that walked on all fours. It had a robustly built skull and a relatively small brain size. Over the next two million years, the species would split into two groups. The ancestors of gorillas and the ancestors of modern humans and chimps. The difference that emerged from these two species can be seen in modern species of chimps and gorilla. When comparing the two skulls, it can be seen that chimp skulls are much smaller and have less exaggerated features. Features such as jaw size, brow thickness, and brain case became much less prominent. This split would represent one of the first major splits that led to more advanced apes. The next major split would occur 7 million years ago. This can be seen in the species Sahelanthropus. Sahelanthropus may have been the first species to split from a more primitive chimp ancestor. It has been considered the earliest human ancestor for some time and this is because of the smaller canine teeth and possibly bipedal stature. An important question in regards to our ancestors becoming bipedal is why? There are a number of pros and cons to bipedalism. One benefit is awareness. When standing on two feet, you are able to see much further and above objects such as foliage. This would certainly help human ancestors detect danger and respond faster. Another reason is locomotion. Walking and running on two feet is efficient. It takes up less energy and allows for more endurance. A negative effect of bipedalism would be slower running speeds. With only two points of contact, speed is decreased and this is not beneficial when outrunning predators. Another very large advantage of bipedalism is the freedom of the forelimbs while moving. When walking on two feet, the other forelimbs can be used for countless things. Animals such as chimps can use their arms but not while moving. This seems like a small advantage, but this allowed our ancestors to use their hands for much more and even defend themselves better. Another question to ask is if bipedalism was so successful in our human lineage, then why didn't other apes like chimps and gorillas become bipedal? The answer is that the lifestyles between these three groups of apes are much different and chimps wouldn't benefit from bipedalism. In the jungle, chimpanzees are very dominant. They can climb around the trees with ease and even run at speeds of 25 miles per hour. Nothing really messes with chimps because they're so at home in the jungle. But now another question must be asked. If chimps are so dominant, then why would another species of ape evolve in the first place that would become bipedal? Wouldn't it just be easier to stay in the trees for survival? A theory to answer this question proposes that in East Africa, the jungle environment was disappearing around 7 million years ago, and these apes were forced to live on the savanna. The savanna is a wide open grassy environment with little cover. Instead of hiding in the safety of the trees, these primitive apes could use their bipedal stature to detect threats and respond effectively. Even if a predator wanted to eat one of these apes, if the whole group knew of its presence, they could gang up and deal with the threat. When thinking about these distant times in human evolution, you must think about the distinctive groups and not just the group as a whole. Chimps, gorillas, and bipedal hominins all play different roles in the environments and were adapted to survive that way. These groups all survive and defended themselves in different ways. Gorillas are individually very strong and they live on the ground. Chimps are less physically intimidating and instead use the trees as their shelter. Early hominins like the first Australopithecines relied on numbers as well as their senses to survive. Now to get back to the human story, we must talk about Australopithecus. Australopithecus is a name used to describe multiple species of Australopithecine. They first appeared in the fossil record about 4.5 million years ago. The first Australopithecine is considered to be Ardipithecus remitus. It was small at only about three and a half feet tall. It likely walked upright, but there are some features that tell us it still frequented the trees like a dexterous big toe. Its brain was smaller than a chimp, but its skull was much different. Its canine teeth were smaller, and this is typically attributed with reduced aggression, increased parental care, and monogamy. These smaller teeth can tell us that the species was more peaceful and coordinated than other apes. Artipithecus was a primitive Australopithecine, and over the next two million years, the genus would produce much more advanced species. The Australopithecine family is quite complex in taxonomic form. 
Over the past decade, some species that were originally thought to be classified as Australopithecus have been reassigned to the genus Paranthropus or Kenyanthropus. These two groups are considered robust Australopithecines, and since their classification is currently debated, I will not cover them in this video. Instead, let us focus on our direct ancestral line. One of the most famous and well-known species of Australopithecine is Australopithecus afarensis. It appeared 3.9 million years ago in Africa. Its significance was mainly in its skeletal structure. Its feet and hips were adapted almost exclusively for bipedalism. Some of its features still suggest it could have lived in the trees. It also had a small brain which was not much bigger than its modern day chimp. It was long thought that big brains developed before bipedal locomotion, but this was found to be incorrect. Afarensis wasn't the first ape to be mainly bipedal, but its skeleton reflects the transition to more advanced bipedal locomotion. For a long time, no stone tools were associated with afarensis, but this has changed. Tools originally thought to be 2.5 million years old were found to be actually 3.5 million years old. This means not only did they use tools, but they had a complex understanding of how to produce them. Afarensis was an important species. It was fundamental to the evolution of its genus, and the later species would further evolve to be more human. The next important species of Australopithecine was Australopithecus africanus. It was the next important step in human evolution. It had a larger brain than ever before and more human-like facial features. This species was much more human-like than afarensis, but in recent years many have argued that it was not a direct human ancestor. It shows the trend of less exaggerated facial features and this can easily be seen in the famous Tong Child. The Tong Child is a juvenile Australopithecus africanus. Its facial features are so human that it could be mistaken for one. And this is because of neoteny and ontogeny. Baby chimpanzees started off looking very human-like. Over the next years of development, their jaws protrude, their brow thickens, and their skulls become much more robust. Ontogeny is the development an organism goes through while neoteny is the delayment of this process. When looking at human evolution as a whole, we see a trend. The jaws and brow get smaller and the brain gets bigger. When looking at a baby chimp, we see smaller jaws and brow and a relatively bigger brain case. From this examination, it is easy to see that humans are neotenic forms of more primitive apes. That is why the Tong child looks so human despite still belonging to a primitive species. The next species of Australopithecine I will be talking about is the most advanced one, Australopithecus sediba. It is the transitional form between Africanus and the Homo genus that we belong to. It had much more advanced legs, allowing it to walk and run more efficiently. It was about 4 feet 2 inches tall, or about 1.3 meters. It had a brain volume of 450 cubic centimeters. This is a third of modern humans, but is still more than previous species of ape. Brain size would not dramatically increase until the next species would evolve from Sediba. Australopithecines all went extinct by 1.9 million years ago, but technically some species evolved into the Homo genus, so they didn't really go extinct. There are some other species of Australopithecine that I did not cover because they were more or less the same. Australopithecines were a really interesting and important group in the evolution of humans. They pioneered tool use, walking upright, and the neoteny seen in modern humans. Though only about as smart as a chimp, they were able to thrive in East Africa. They were our distant ancestors, and there is much more we will learn about them as more fossils are discovered. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this look into Australopithecine evolution. I hope you like this video and subscribe to the channel for more great videos. This has been your host Northo2 and I'll see you in the next one. Oh wait, before the video ends, look at this uh I think I'm, I think this is a Homo erectus that I made in ceramics. I was originally going to do an Australopithecine cuz it's like, hey, I'm making it for this video, but I actually made it way too big and uh Australopithecines had kind of smaller skulls. So I just decided to make it a homo erectus, but look at that, that's pretty cool, huh? And I also made a full-size bear plaque that I'm going to mount on my wall. As you can see, it's pretty large. Uh, I just wanted to just add a little personal touch to this video, so that is all. Again, see ya.